Welcome back to our video series here in the Bruderhof. We're focusing on following the coal, and that's about the Sermon on the Mount and how we live that out together. So we've arrived at chapter 32, and it is entitled God's Kingdom. And this is just a really exciting topic, obviously, I think, for everyone who watches this channel. You know, that's what we're all grappling with, like living here on earth, but also for the kingdom and what's to come. And I think that the selections in this chapter are really fitting and really challenging. The first one being from Eberhard Arnold, where he talks about um, prayer is not replacing work and how the two are synonymous and how we have to be ready to be completely altered by our prayer life and what that means in practicalities. Um, and then Christoph Friedrich Blumhart, there's this great selection here um, and it basically focuses on why we're placed on earth and frankly addresses that trap that we often fall into the saying like, oh, you know, we're living for, for the kingdom, we're living for eternity. Well, what about here? Like, why are we placed on this earth? So it really focuses on the why and why are we here to bring God's kingdom to earth? God intentionally sent Jesus to this world, to this earth. And what does that actually mean to us here and now, not just in some distant century? So Rich, I'm really curious what you got out of the chapter and it's always enlightening. Yeah, no, this is a, this is a big topic yeah. and one that we could and should be thinking about every day. Um, and it's drawing from the Lord's Prayer, uh, Matthew 6.10, where we pray, Your kingdom come. And I think that's probably one of these things that we pray um, without thinking a lot about what that means. And it's just so important that we reckon with it. Um, mm -hmm. What it means is that God rules in every aspect of our life, not just our spiritual life, um, but in our economic life, in our political life, um, in our relationships. Mm -hmm. um, there should be no area in our lives that is untouched by God's rule. And so when we're praying for this, as, as you said, Doreen, um, we're, a we're, a we're asking for something that um, will and should shatter the status quo. Yes. And Eber Arnold writes here, it is dangerous to call on God in this way, for it means we are ready not only to be lifted up from our place, but to be hurled down from our place, mm. right? So there may be areas in our life um, that we're quite happy with um, and we're quite satisfied with, but which are not ruled, which are not under God's rulership. And those pla that's, that needs to be changed, right? Mm. So it's not only um, rescuing us from our sin and misery, which are plenty, yeah. um, but it's also correcting places um, where we're satisfied. Well, the other thing that it brought up for me, Rich, was um, prayer without work is hypocrisy. But then in thinking about that, when we are working and we can't do everything in our, in our own strength, especially when it is synonymous with, you know, living out justice and, and fighting for the right order in this world, um, and we can't do that in our own power without God's help. So that's why that's often what pushes us towards prayer, which is a good thing. But then also Everhart talks about how we need to take ourselves out of the equation. Like we can't do anything in our own power. So to me, I was kind of just thinking about that and kind of grappling with that because I think the human intention, the human, our human um, inclination is to kind of like see where we're managing to sustain something or make improvements or something better instead of like giving all the glory to God. So I think that is often a big part of the struggle here. Yeah, I mean, it is like, it is a bit of a tension and yeah. a bit of a paradox. And I know a lot of ink has been spilled on, you know, especially in, in Protestant theology about um, um, faith not works, right? We are justified, we are justified by faith and there's an emphasis on, you know, faith alone and grace alone. Um, I just don't see how you read the Sermon on the Mount and don't see that it really implies um, doing something. Yeah. Like doing real things um, for others. I mean, Matthew 25, well, this is not the Sermon on the Mount, but Matthew 25, like, obviously talks about, like, the things that we do when we are children of God, which is, you know, uh, caring for others, right? Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I really found um, Bloomhart's, this selection from CF Bloomhart, um, Christoph Friedrich Bloomhart, super inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, and it really emphasizes that we need to believe, right? Right. Nowadays, it takes a terrible struggle to bring this about. Do you know why? Because nobody believes it. Um, but then he later says, please prove to me which of the two is biblical, our death and flight into heaven or God's future here on earth. Um, from the first to the last chapter, the Bible deals with the coming of God into this world, and there is nothing about this business of dying. Mm. And, you know, that's just really inspiring and invigorating. And that's why I, at least, and I'm sure you, um, that's why we live the way we do in community, because that's what we're trying to um, realize through the help of God, obviously. It's not something we can do on our own. But um, we do believe, and everyone should believe, that this can be real um, here on Earth. Yes. So I'm sure there'll be some out there who say, uh, you know, grace alone. And uh, I'd love to discuss that uh, in the comments with you. Um, but most of all, when we do pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, let's really think about it and make sure we're actually ready for that. Mm -hmm. and, and cling to hope, God's hope. Indeed. All right, well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.